The internet is a buzz once again. Why? I'll give you three words. Call of duty. <laughs> duty. What's up everybody? Classic Game Freak here. And I wanted to kind of weigh in a little bit on the new announcement for this year's Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. It's by Sledgehammer Games, and uh, it's no surprise that we have a yearly Call of Duty coming out. Now, last year's Call of Duty was Ghosts, and I can honestly say that it was one of the worst Call of Duties in some time. World at War uh, probably took the cake before that, but uh, Ghosts, it was just awful coming off of... Black Ops 2, which was actually a really good Call of Duty, uh, I've got to admit. Now, first and foremost, I don't want you to think that I am a Call of Duty fanboy, because I'm really not. I see it as a Madden franchise that uh, seems like they have to come out with every year. It's gotten a little stale, but I can understand where they're coming from, how they can market it every year, because you can't just put that much new tech into a game and expect it to be a downloadable content for $15, $20. It's got to be rebuilt. I understand it's with the same engine, uh, but still, I can imagine that the framework for the game is a little different on each game that comes out. Now, this was supposed to be revealed actually today. Today's May 5th. It was supposed to be revealed today. Apparently it got leaked a little early. Uh, all of a sudden I saw Kevin Spacey all over the place. And uh, that goes with the single player storyline. Something about he's talking about democracy, which is no big surprise since he's in uh, House of Cards on Netflix. Uh, of course he's going to play some politician. Um, I remember reading something about PMC dealer. Uh, I don't know. Never been a big fan of the single player campaign in any of these games. I buy the Call of Duty games because I do like the Call of Duty games to a certain degree. There's something about it that makes me come back and play some more, even though I get super frustrated with campers, I get super frustrated with quick scopers, I get super frustrated with a little 10 year old whose balls haven't dropped. It. Oh, I killed you! <laughs> I killed you! <laughs> That's why I hit mute. Uh, I love the mute button in Call of Duty. <laughs> even though I miss out on the spectacular moments when I managed to put a couple of rounds into somebody's face and don't get to hear their reaction. But enough of that! You want to hear what I have to think about the game? Well, this one stands out, actually, to me. It seems like it could, could, mind you, have the chance to be something a little fresh from a stale franchise. Okay, it's set in the future, obviously. You've got instantly a character wearing an exoskeleton. Uh, it looks like something out of Elysium. And the first thing they show is a freaking, like, super jump. The, the character jumps, well, it looks like he's on a bridge, jumps way up high in the air and lands right in front of the camera. Now, mind you, these are cinematics, so uh, take it with a grain of salt. But some of the tech that they show in the game, I would imagine, would leak over to the multiplayer. So, super jump. Uh, another thing I saw, since they have the exoskeletons, why not super strength? Uh, there's a part whenever the character is jumping on cars, bashes into a car, throws an enemy out, flings them out. Flings him out like he's nothing. Just weightless. Whoop, gone. Oh boy, there is there is hover bikes, which from Call of Duty's history will more than likely be a single player thing. Uh, the way the little combat, the little uh, the little gameplay they showed of it really looked like it was on rails. Uh, looked kind of like the snow the snow bikes in Call of Duty. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, um, yeah, Modern Warfare 2, uh, showed that, uh, there was a character cloaks in it, so there's the tech to cloak, that would be a great little game changer, uh, maybe there's some tech that you can detect cloaked players, uh, there's a grenade, like one character tosses a grenade in the air, 
and a grid comes up and you're able to see enemies behind walls and so on and it only lasts a couple of seconds before it kind of fades out. Great another idea for multiplayer. There was one huge exoskeleton dude just buff with a Gatling gun. I could see huge characters walking through there, a heavy class. Oh shit, here's the exoskeleton, get him! They all just have to pile on him, the other team does, to take him down. Freaking takes clips upon clips to take him down. But, you also have to earn that. I think that'd be great instead of just being like, Oh, here's a class, let's pick that heavy class, and go in there every time and whale the other team. I will admit, they do decently do a good job balancing the classes and what you can and can't select, so uh, pick 10, please come back. Um, that was pretty neat in balance. In one part of the game, in one part of the trailer, they show the character look at these gloves, grab onto the side of a building, and start climbing. Once again, I'm hoping this is not just in single player, but this is actually in the multiplayer version of the game, simply because this game could use some verticality. I would like to be able to scale walls. I would like to be able to hang off of walls and shoot. Now, mind you, I am a huge Titanfall fan, and you do this in Titanfall, but I would like to see this in Call of Duty simply because you add that verticality. You're not just looking 360 degrees anymore around you. You're having to look in the air. It adds an element to the game that the, that the game could really just straight up use. Another part of the game shows a character with a deployable shield, grabs one side of it and pulls it, making a bigger shield for his teammates to get behind. Once again, that would be great strategic items to use in a multiplayer campaign, hide behind cover that you set up that could create a little bit of a dynamic level, uh, especially if it sticks round, if it if it stayed there, something you had to jump over. It, it's a new little wall uh, instead of it disappearing when you die. Uh, I think that'd be awesome. A uh, setup point, you could even create a whole entire boxed in area to try to hold off. That'd be awesome. And one last thing that I actually read about it a little bit is the rumor that there is energy-based weapons in the game. We could see lasers and we could see particle cannons in this game. And that's something I think that uh, would be interesting. Um, we had yet to see a futuristic Call of Duty and it's something that people have been asking for. Uh, I have seen a lot of, oh, we, we have a lot of futuristic games. We don't need Call of Duty going in the future. The, the game was known for its realism. You guys have wasted it. I'm not buying this. Here's the deal about Call of Duty. If you like it, buy it. If you like it, play it. If you have friends playing it and you want to play it, go buy it. I don't understand the, the hate with it. Either you buy it or you don't. So that's all I really have to say. Thank you for watching. I don't know about you, I'm pretty excited about this one. I know it comes out every year, but this, I was pretty excited for Black Ops 2, and I'm glad I own it. I actually like Black Ops 2. It's a very kind of, it's set in the future a little ways, and there's something kind of fresh about the Pick 10 system that I really loved. I think that Advanced Warfare might do the same thing that Black Ops 2 did. So... The trailers got me excited, even though it was a lot of filler, a lot of single player stuff in there. I think that's going to transition over to multiplayer, and it's going to make a really, really fun multiplayer experience. And give that breath of fresh air for Call of Duty that it really needs to keep striving as one of the top, if not the top, first person shooter. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree, disagree, what you think, what you don't think, whatever. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.